I'm gonna show you how to make homemade cheddar cheese sauce and crispy Ritz crusted chicken. It's crispy, it's cheesy, it's definitely something you don't wanna miss. All right, so for ingredients we have, okay, so for our onion piquet, we have clove, bay leaf, and onion, two eggs for egg wash, flour, block of cheddar, Ritz cracker, butter, whole milk, make sure it's whole milk, chicken breasts. Okay, not too much prep involved. The first thing we're gonna do is break up the Ritz crackers. We wanna break it up as fine as possible. So I have a Ziploc bag. You can do it either in a blender, a Roboku, uh, or you can use this Ziploc bag like I'm gonna do. Get a bowl and a plate. We're going to crack two eggs. We're gonna whisk them, add a little bit of water, and we're gonna place that into the plate for an egg wash. For our pterodactyl chicken breast, we're gonna clean it up and we're gonna butterfly that. All right, so what we wanna do is we wanna trim off some of this fat. And you can see how thick this thing is. So we're gonna just butterfly it. Start on this side. Work your knife, hands flat, so you don't cut your fingers. And slowly go with the natural curve of the chicken breast. Just like that, we got one right there. We're gonna get a, two more out of this. Work the knife all the way down, just like that. So now grab two plates and we're gonna set up our complete breading procedure and have that ready. So for our first plate, we're gonna place our flour. Always season your flour, so I'm gonna mix this with a little bit of salt and a little bit of black pepper. You can use white pepper if you'd like. We'll give that a little mix up. And then for our second plate here, we're gonna place our Ritz crackers that we crumbled. So this is a standard breading procedure. We have our seasoned flour, we have our egg wash, and we have our bread, which we're using Ritz cracker. All right, so we're gonna season our chicken breast and we're gonna pass it through the breading procedure. to look out for. One, whatever hand you use most often, I'm a right hand guy, so my left hand is always for the dry, the flour and the breading. My right hand is for the egg, that way you don't bread your fingers. Also, you notice I double breaded it, it's gonna create a better crust. So after you dip it in the bread the first time, go back to the egg and then back to the breading again to give it that extra crispiness. We're gonna grate our cheese now. Okay, great question just popped up from the peanut gallery back there. Why didn't I just use grated cheese already grated? Well, the reason for that is we're gonna make a sauce with this cheese. If I was just melting the cheese on top of the chicken, no problem, but grated cheese has cornstarch added to the bag so it doesn't stick together. That cornstarch is going to mess with my sauce. So that's why you use block cheese and then grate it, okay? So our cheese is grated, our chicken is breaded. Let's hit the stove and start cooking. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna build our sauce. I'm actually gonna show you how to make one of the five French mother sauces. We're gonna start by making a bechamel. So the first step, we drop our butter in. We're gonna start building a roux. A roux is what's gonna thicken this sauce. So a roux is equal parts fat to flour. So in this case, our fat is butter. We're gonna melt that completely down. And then we're gonna slowly start to whisk in our flour. 
and we're gonna slowly start to whisk in our flour until we get a wet sand consistency. Okay, and right about there, that's what I'm looking for. And we're gonna cook this for about three minutes. I just want a blonde roux. Make sure your heat is on like a medium heat. You don't wanna burn this or add too much color. So I killed my heat, and I'm gonna continuously stir this to cool it down just a little bit. And now we're gonna slowly start to add our milk, but you have to constantly stir when you're adding the milk, or what's gonna happen is the flour is gonna chunk up on you. You can heat up the milk, and this is gonna reduce that from happening. I don't have the time to do that, I just wanna get it done. So if you slowly add your milk in and whisk at the same time, then all the temperatures will come together and you don't have to do that extra step. Nobody needs extra steps these days, we're in a hurry. So keep slowly adding, whisking. Make sure you're getting on those edges of the pan because that flour loves to stick inside crevices. So I'm scraping the sides, still whisking. So your sauce is gonna be in a liquidy state like this. That's perfect, because we're gonna cook this for at least 40 minutes. And as it cooks, it's going to thicken naturally from that roux that we added. But we wanna cook out that floury taste. So on a low, low temperature, we don't want this to simmer. We want it to be almost simmering, because what's gonna happen is this whole milk in there, it will separate like cheese. It'll curdle up on you. So we wanna just bring this back on and we're gonna keep it on a low temperature and keep an eye on it. And especially at first, when you first, uh, when this thing first starts to heat up and get close to a simmer, that flour is gonna to wanna to stick. So you wanna make sure you're continuously stirring for the first like five minutes. Add a little bit of salt. Okay, so if your sauce gets real, real thick within like the first five minutes, go ahead, add some water just to thin it out. You can add some more milk if you'd like, but I'm gonna add just a little bit of water to thin it back out because I need to cook this for the 30 to 40 minutes and I don't want it to be, it's just gonna be way too thick. So we just thin it out just a little bit, just like that, and let it keep rolling. So now we're gonna build our onion pique. So what you do is you take your onion piece, your bay leaf, put it on top, you're gonna take your piece of clove, you're gonna stab it through, just like that. It holds it together and drop it right in the sauce. And there you go, that is an authentic French mother sauce called bechamel. So I got my sauce set aside, it's on low. Don't forget about it, continuously stir it every 10 minutes and like I said at the beginning, make sure you're stirring it really good. Uh, we're gonna get our pan ready for our, we're gonna pan fry our chicken. So, get your pan on, I'm gonna add blended oil which is mostly canola but it has a little bit of mix of olive in there. Add that to the pan. And when you pan fry, you're basically cooking, you're, there's enough oil to cover halfway up the uh, piece of meat that's in the pan. That's pan frying. So 20 minutes in, I'm gonna remove our onion pique. And now we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna add our cheese. And for that last 10 minutes, we're gonna let the cheese basically just melt in there. And now we have a lovely cheese sauce. This cheese sauce can be used for nachos, it can be used for mac and cheese. Um, in this case, it's gonna be spread across the top of the chicken. This is basically how you make homemade cheese sauce. So I'm gonna add our cheese in there. My heat is on completely, like almost not even on. And basically what we're doing is we're just melting the cheese into the sauce, the sauce is done. So while that's working, we're gonna go ahead and start frying our chicken. All right, oil's ready. We're gonna go ahead, drop our chicken in. Always drop away from you, so if any oil splashes, it splashes that way. And we're gonna basically just pan fry this four minutes on each side. Should be a nice golden brown. All right, four minutes. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna flip this one over. That beautiful color right there. Beautiful. I got this on like a medium heat. You want some bubbles, but you don't want this like really, really hot, because what's gonna happen is all the edges it's gonna cook too fast. You're not gonna cook all the way through the chicken. So just make sure you got a nice little medium heat going. My cheese is totally melted in my sauce, so I just covered it up with some foil. You can put the lid back on, but just cover it, cut the heat. That way it doesn't build the skin on top of the surface of your sauce. 
All right, once your chicken's fully cooked, I have a sheet tray with a rack. I'm gonna set those to the side and I'm gonna finish cooking the rest of my chicken. All right, I got the chicken ready, the sauce is ready. Let's plate this up. So, are we ready? Well, I'm still talking. Okay. You want me to just talk here? No, they're both on. Oh, okay. Two minutes until we can't... You weren't recording? And now we're gonna build our onion bouquet. Poke? What is it? PK. PK. Gonna go ahead and I'm gonna remove our onion bouquet. Onion PK. Okay. P. PK. PK. Oh, bitch. Cheddar cheese sauce on top of. On top. And there it is! I, saw, I thought I saw something.